put some things together uh, in string theory. There's two aspects of string theory, and one is the constant. It takes a derivative of the Planck constant. Max Planck is a physicist that developed quantum theory, or was one of the physicists to develop quantum theory in the early 1900s. And he derived a constant based on experiments with black body mass. And black body mass is uh, a material that, I think it's black body mass, it's black body something, black body material. It absorbs all electromagnetic frequency wavelength, absorbs it all. So all light, all sound, anything put into it is absorbed and then released by the black body in another in in the the correlating frequency i think it combines all the frequency and then puts out a frequency and it can be measured and how he got energy from this is he would take the frequency from the black body in hertz which is cycles per second and multiply it by this constant, Planck's constant, and it's a number, six point, like six point six two four nine eight three seven one parenthesis four four, which is a differential, multiplied by ten to the like negative thirty four. So it's really a small number. It's a, it's like point zero zero thirty four times six six two, and that number multiplied by the frequency gives you energy, gives you joules. So this constant was taken by Dirac. I haven't studied who this guy is, but Dirac made a constant. And Dirac's constant is the Planck constant that Max Planck got from this black body, and uh, or or used in order to explain something with. This technology. Essentially, as the technology gets better and we can see smaller, we develop more constants, more ideas, and so science constantly develops because we keep seeing smaller things and larger things. So Dirac's constant was invented. And Dirac's constant is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Pi is the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter of a circle. So how I translate that to real life is when two people are in a room communicating, there's a circle around them, a line between them, which is the diameter, and essentially it's the space around them divided by the space between them. That's pi in, in perceptual terms and something you, you can translate. So if you're in a conversation with someone, there's an area around you and an area between you, and that is pi. It's, it's a feeling, almost. Feeling. It is a feeling. It can be, if you're, if you're letting it be. Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Okay, when I say 2 pi is a feeling, I mean this is me stretching, expanding. I've felt moments of understanding that, and I see why the number exists. And it's a constant also, which is interesting. No matter how far away you are from someone, the area around you divided by the area between you can be measured by its pi. So two of those, essentially two people's perception of, a situ of the situation is Dirac's constant. Dirac's constant measures instead of in frequency, instead of multiplying Dirac's, uh, like, like Planck's constant, by the frequency to get joules, it multiplies Dirac's constant, which is the Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, by radians. So it's this Planck constant multiplied by the radians equals the joules, the amount of energy. The radians. Now, this is interesting. This is the basis of string theory. One of the bases of string theory is Dirac's constant multiplied by the radians. So I'm going to plug something in and show you. This is what I believe string theory to be. This is what I believe it is. Or this is one way to show what's happening in string theory. Plug this, do I have room? Do I have room? 
Okay. This is a, uh, you know what this is. I'm sure you've seen something like this. This can be turned on. Now, in string theory, I believe when you take Dirac's constant and you multiply it by the radians to get energy, you're seeing how much of the system is being filled. And you're seeing, like, the radio in here, there's, there's a set amount of radians. Each time it goes from the center to the edge of a sphere, it's producing one of the radians. And it can fill it out. If you have 50 of them, you'll see 50 radians. And whatever you have, however many you have, multiplied by this constant gives you the amount of energy. Essentially saying how much of the system is filled will relate to how much energy there is, which is quantization. Where it's appearing, how much is appearing. This could be filled with... Okay, so, so what I believe is happening is that the center of this is the vibration. And it is causing waves as we perceive them, light and sound, sensory perception, the five senses get these waves. This is a wave that is being produced when the vibration is connecting to something. We perceive it as something. But the vibration is always there in the center. Now what's interesting to me is that this is plugged into a wall and so I believe that the vibration that we understand is also plugged into a wall somewhere. Something is powering this vibration and I at this point don't understand that because the vibration is new to me. Well, I mean, I do understand it. Science is always developing. It never stops. So, and even string theory is just another step. Something is powering thought, the vibration, which I see as thought. Now, using this constant, we're able to see how much of a system, how much energy is produced by a, a spherical system, like our body, can be measured the energy output, if you can measure the radians multiplied by this Dirac's constant. It got a little muddy there when I started talking about the vibration because the vibration is not part of Dirac's constant. That is explaining where and how, what's appearing, what's appearing. Now, the other aspect of string theory is alpha prime. Alpha prime is the tension of the string. So you can take how much is appearing, how much is being filled out in the system, and understand that aspect of it and see, okay, this is being filled out. This, this cup is being filled out. There's X amount of radians per second, or radians. There's X amount of radians per second. That's what it is, being filled out. So every second, this amount of radians is being produced, this amount of straight lines, angled momentum, angle, angled vectors, and multiplied by the Dirac's constant, it gives you this much energy in this system. And you can measure the amount of radians with technology. You can see it in this ball. You can see it in straight lines. We can measure wavelength, and that's a radian. It's a wavelength to an end. And if there's a hundred of them, then you have a hundred. If there's a million, then you have a million. The number goes on. It can be anything. Essentially saying, what's that's quantization. It's explaining where it's appearing, how what's appearing. The tension, alpha, it's what's appearing. The tension explains how that what is appearing. In what form is that what appearing? With people, it's how we feel. That's the alpha prime. It's the thought. It's the thought. We translate it as thoughts. That's alpha prime. The, the tension. We create it. When we look at someone, we create a tension in that someone. When we look at something, we create tension in that something. We quantize it. When we're not looking or perceiving something, it exists as a free-flowing string without the tension being pulled on it by our perception. It's being pulled on by all things. But we can choose what we tense by perceiving it. Anything. Thinking about, looking at, talking to, talking to, 
And I've been, I've been learning this and studying this and looking away and talking while I'm looking away because it's a different experience. If I'm not looking at it, then I'm not tugging on it and I'm not putting my predetermined conception of it onto it. When I meet someone, I have a predetermined conception that I subconsciously place on them, tensing them, tensing their string or their understanding of the string into a shape that I believe it is, which can de detriment, which can cause detriment to a situation. Because if I'm looking away and letting them form themselves, it's, it's very effective, although it's, it's a different way of communication. Because that's when we communicate, we look at each other, we're, we're tensing each other and shaping each other. And when you look away, you're allowing that person to be more free-flowing, and it's good to do both. I've been making a lot of eye contact for about a year, and I've realized it's a lot of, causing a lot of tension. So looking away is very important. Understanding this concept of Alpha Prime, the mind, speaking in the mind, clearing the channel of, with truth. Say all the things that you're afraid to say from your past. Clear all that out so you have a free mind to communicate truth, communicate anything in the mind. You have control over Alpha Prime. And when you have both understanding, you can manipulate string theory.